friends, welcome to Reimagining Chapel. My name is Amanda Esco, and I am the director of the Religious Education Program here at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. Spring is in the air. I'm excited. I'm excited to be in my garden. I'm excited to spend more time outside with my friends now that more and more people are vaccinated and our community's transmission rate is getting lower and lower. It feels safer to be out with others and I'm so excited for that. I know we still have to wait a little bit longer to get together with our church friends, but we can do it, I promise. We just need to have a little bit more of that patience of spring before those beautiful flowers start popping up. Let's light our chalice. I have mine. Do you have yours? If you have one at home, go run and get it and come right back. We can light them together. Symbol of light. Symbol of knowledge. Symbol of warmth. Symbol of freedom. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. The infinite possibilities of spring, the infinite possibilities of hope. The school year is coming to an end. Our church year is starting to wrap up. We're seeing these glimmers of times changing. I'm excited. All right, let's take a moment and ground ourselves. Let's do our breathing. I love using our bowl. Oop, almost dropped the pillow. I love using the bowl to help us center ourselves in the sound and in our space. So wherever you are, get yourself all set. I like to stand up so I can feel my feet touch the ground. But you do what feels good to you. Maybe it's laying down. Maybe it's just sitting on your couch. However works for you. Let's take a couple quiet breaths together in this stillness. We're gonna breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth as I ding this bell. Are you ready? We'll breathe three deep times. Okay, deep breath in through our nose. And out through our mouth. Let's do that again. Deep breath in through our nose. One last time. Deep breath in through our nose. Taking these quiet moments grounds us in our space and ourselves. So thank you for taking that time with me. You know what else grounds us? Sharing, sharing what's in our hearts, what's in our minds with the people that love us so. I want you to share your joys and concerns for just a few seconds with the people that are with you that love you. I'll be right here waiting for you when you get back. Thank you for sharing your joys and concerns with the people that love you, that are with you, that want the best for you. They want to hear what's in your hearts and they want to share what's in theirs with you. Well, you notice I have this big old bag full of things up here and oh, it's heavy. So this spring, we are partnering once again with the Utah Refugee Connection to collect supplies for our refugee neighbors and friends in our community. So in our kits, we have several things that we're trying to collect. You will probably have some of these new items in your home that you could donate. We need things like paper towels and cleaning spray, dish soap, Lysol wipes, ever so important. We need hand soap and hand sanitizer. Additionally, oh, the big Bertha, we need laundry detergent for each of these kits. Now, the religious education department actually donated all of the bags we'll need for this project. So you don't have to worry about the bags. Oh, and a sponge strapped at the bottom. 
But these are all of the items that we're looking for for our spring cleaning kits. Now, you don't have to pick up every single one of these items. You may only be able to pick up a couple sponges, or maybe you think that you can collect all of the items for a couple bags. That would be amazing. We have a sign-up kit that's located in the torch and in the RE newsletter. So if you look there, there's an easy sign up for you to sign up. How many of these, or how many of these, you wanna drop off here at the main doors of the church. Look for that sign up. This is an important way we can have direct help in our community with our neighbors. So please consider donating and signing up. On that note, Miss Lissa has one of my favorite UUs who works for an organization that's close to my heart. Thank you, Lissa, for sharing with us. My name is Lissa Lander, and I'm the Religious Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. This week in RE, we are learning about becoming a more just community. Our UU of the week, Henry Berg, is a great example of that. He started the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or the ASPCA. Later, he started the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, which was the first organization to ever stand up for the rights of children. And Henry Berg was a Unitarian. Henry was born in New York in 1811. He was born into wealth and became a man of leisure, always sporting a fancy silk top hat and a cane. He spent time in Europe trying his hand at writing, but was never terribly successful. When President Lincoln appointed him as a representative to the Tsar of Russia in 1863, he first began to notice cruelty towards animals, horses in particular. Before returning to America, he stopped in London to meet with the president of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals to study how that organization worked. Many animals were treated horribly in America. Horses were used for transportation and they were often starved or denied water. And when their owners decided that the horses were no longer useful, they were often abandoned and just left to die. Henry Berg famously confronted a horse owner who he caught beating a horse in the street. Henry said that animals had rights and presented a copy of the brand new law passed by the New York legislature defending the rights of animals. Henry Berg had recently created the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or the ASPCA which was the first group in America to defend the rights of animals and try to make their lives better. Henry won the support of many of his fellow Unitarians, including Ralph Waldo Emerson and Louisa May Alcott. Henry Berg even challenged P.T. Barnum, who was a Universalist, on the care and keeping of the animals in his circus eventually winning over Barnum's support and improving the lives of the animals in the circus. Unitarian and Universalist churches began establishing and supporting multiple humane societies in America and in Canada. Now, Henry was occasionally criticized for putting so much energy into the lives of animals. So, when he learned about a nine-year-old girl who was being abused, he said, guys, that's not okay. And he tried to help, but there were no family members who were willing to intervene and law enforcement would not get involved because at the time, children had no legal right to be treated humanely. Children, much like animals, were property but they had even less protection under the law than the animals did. Henry called for the Society of Prevention of Cruelty to Children to be created, but when nobody answered the call, he did it himself. Henry Berg created the first U.S. law protecting children from domestic abuse. People called Henry the Great Meddler and repeatedly threatened him to stay out of their business. 
<clears throat> but he just responded with a tip of his fancy top hat and a well-placed jab with his walking stick and went right on defending the rights of children and animals until his death in 1888. Unitarian poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow spoke at his funeral and said that Berg was, quote, among the noblest of the land, the friend of every friendless beast. I am so happy to add Henry Berg to our ever-growing collection of Unitarian Universalists of the Week. To learn more about fascinating UUs, go to uuoftheweek.org and be sure to join us next time for another edition of, our, of Reimagining Chapel. Hello, friends. I cannot believe we are at the end of April. How did that even happen? As you know, this month in religious education, our theme has been becoming. We've talked about becoming kinder like Jesus, becoming aware of our environment, and becoming our authentic selves. A lot of this month so far has been focused on ourselves. For today's Wonder Box, I want us to think bigger. What would it look like to become a more just community? What does that even mean? Let's see what's inside our Wonder Box and if it can help. I'm actually gonna set it down because it's really heavy. Oh! This is why it's heavy. It's our balance scales. We've used these scales before, and people use them a lot as imagery for justice. When I'm talking about a just community, though, I'm envisioning a world where people are physically and emotionally safe. People have their needs met and are thriving. Everyone has opportunities for education. Our air is clean. Our water is clean, our earth is safe. In a just community, people are allowed to express their ideas, religion, and beliefs however they see best. People are allowed to love who their hearts guide them to and make a family. A just community is anti-racist. We see our beautiful differences and celebrate them while knowing no person is better than another. This, my friends, makes up our idea for a just community. Well, how do we get there? One way of becoming a more just community is by working together while recognizing our differences. This is called intersectionality. In a minute, I'm going to read a book called Intersection Allies, We Make Room for All. At the end of the book, the authors included this definition of intersectionality, which I think is just really great. Intersectionality is a word that explains how all of the different parts of a person combine to affect their life experiences and personal identity. Age, ability, skin color, religion, citizenship, body size, and culture all make up our personal identity and influence who we are and how we live. The idea of intersectionality not only helps us understand who we are, but it can also help us think about how we relate to other people. Thinking about race, class, gender, citizenship, and other identities together rather than separately can help us notice more opportunities for solidarity with people who are different from us. Creating a more just world will require us to relate to others unlike ourselves. Let's listen to the book and see what we can learn from the character's intersectionality. Intersection Allies, We Make Room for All by Chelsea Johnson, Latoya Council, and Carolyn Choi. Illustrations by Ashley Smith. Witness the lives of a bold group of friends. If one is in need, another defends. Age is one trait that each of them share. But kids' lives are unique, as you'll soon be aware. Each child has a story, their own point of view, filled with passion and power, just like you. My name is Alejandra, but I go by Ali. I use a chair, but it doesn't define me. Instead, it allows me to zip, glide, and play. 
When I need to get through, friends help make a way. Where there's room for some, we make room for all. Friends can be allies, no matter how small. Hello, I'm Parker. After school every day, Allie's family takes care of us both while we play. My mom works hard to provide for me. Her love's the source of our stability. Not toys or money, nor treasures untold. Community care is more precious than gold. Skirts and frills are cute, I suppose. But my superhero cape is more cape than those bows. Some may be confused, but a kid like me can wear what I want and be proud and carefree. My friends defend my choices in place. A bathroom, like all rooms, should be a safe space. My name is Adalia, and just like Kate, what I wear inspires endless debate. Some give, some chant, some sing, some pray. My hijab is my choice. You can choose your own way. The clothes that you wear never justify hatred. Clothes can be playful, simple, or sacred. Covered, adorned, or with casual flair. My body's my own. I dress it with care. My name is Nia, and with what's on the news, it's easy to be frightened or sing the blues. For her, for them, for him, and for me, we all deserve to breathe and be free. The color of our skin is no reason to hide. We protest for safety, equality, and pride. Our friends join along in solidarity and love. This is the stuff that allies are made of. Safety also includes our trees and air. The land we've called home are places of prayer. I am Dakota and like my ancestors, my tribe and I are water protectors. From profit and power, we stand up to preserve our nation, our culture, and the respect we deserve. My name is Gloria, y tengo siete años. After school, it's to la frutaria I go. Trabajo cada día junta a mi madre. Viendemos pina dolce y mango con chili. My language and savvy allow us to thrive. I've got hopes and dreams and skills and drive. Working together makes us both more secure. I'm a daughter, a partner, and an entrepreneur. My name is Hee Jung, and I was born in Seoul. I moved here when I was five years old. I'm part of what's called the 1.5 generation. My parents and I span two different nations. Like Gloria, I am a help to my mother by translating for her one word to another. When the landlord tells my mom, you can pay me next Friday, I repeat in Korean, Oma rentu deum yun gemor nada doneda. By na we navigate life in our new home together. Kids, kids have the skills to make every day better. My name is Yuri and I'm new to this place. He Young's family welcomed me with love and grace. Finding refuge meant traveling far from home. I sailed, I flew, I rode, and I roamed, escaping violence, war, heartache, and intrusion. We came to this nation seeking dreams of inclusion. From near, from far, from here, from there, we're more than our origins. We all deserve care. Race, religion, citizenship, class, and ability. Each of these intersects to form identity. Age, gender, size, and skin color too can make living life different for a friend than for you. Barriers and biases are often to blame. We strive to be equal, but not all the same. Life's up and downs can take many forms. By standing together, we'll rewrite the norms. Where there's room for some, we make room for all. Friends can be allies, no matter how small. In order for us to create a more just world and community, it's going to take us recognizing our intersectionality. When we relate to others, we see their humanity and want the best for them. It reminds me of our seventh principle, our interconnected web. Our web connects us to everyone, people that are like us 
and people that may be different from us in different ways. We can align ourselves as allies, though, with this idea of intersectionality. Creating a just world will take all of us working together to create it. Thank you for joining us today for Reimagining Chapel. To find out more information about the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City, please visit us at slcuu.org. Until next time, though, let's heart out. people have